Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. We have team coverage of Lieutenant Jason Menard's funeral tonight, but first we saw some showers throughout the day and it looks like more is on the way and could affect your ride into work Tuesday morning. Let's get a first look at our local forecast for more. Hey there, good evening to you. I'm meteorologist Pamela Gardner. It's been a drizzly, cloudy day and chilly afternoon for us. But now this evening, our temperatures hover just above the freezing mark. In the Worcester Hills, we could see some light icing from time to time later tonight as our temperatures dip to near freezing. But otherwise, some waves of drizzle and some spot showers will still be in the forecast for tonight. And mostly cloudy skies too as our temperatures stay for the most part in the mid 30s across Worcester and across Leominster as well as Fitchburg. Overnight lows eventually drop to near freezing and that's going to be early tomorrow morning. That's why we have a chance for a little wind Entry precipitation and also some slick spots on the roads early tomorrow morning. The wind from the north and west and tomorrow the wind does calm down a little bit. Light breeze from the west southwest, but our temperatures in the low 40s and it's going to be a cool day for tomorrow too. patches of ice. That's what we're concerned with. I'll show you more in the hour by hour timing into tomorrow morning and then an active week ahead when we could see more of a wintry mix or rain showers in your exclusive 10 day forecast. A somber moment as the casket of Worcester Fire Lieutenant Jason Menard passes by the McEwen Road Fire Station for the final time. He was assigned to Ladder 5 Group 2. It's where he and his crew left for his last call. The 39 year old died battling a four alarm fire on Stockholm Street last week. His funeral was held this morning. Lieutenant Menard died after helping colleagues escape the fire. He was remembered for always having a smile on his face and for the ability to make everyone feel special. Our Chandler Walsh has more. It's a solemn day here in Worcester. Thousands gathered to pay their respects to fallen fire Lieutenant Jason Menard for a true hero's final send off. To our comrade, your last alarm, you're going home. A final farewell to a fallen brother. The Worcester Fire Department remembering Lieutenant Jason Menard. All I have to do is talk about Jay Menard and I'll be honoring a hero, a word he's already defined. People close to Menard say he was a great firefighter and family man, making everyone feel special with a smile. Lieutenant John Dwyer delivered the eulogy, saying Lieutenant Menard's strength is carried on in his family. You are the greatest example of character, strength and love that I have ever seen. The 39 year old died in the line of duty at a four alarm fire on Stockholm Street. He saved multiple firefighters, including Chris Pace, who he pushed from a third floor window. We're here today honoring the bravest and most selfless man I've ever had the chance to meet. Daniel Pace spoke on behalf of his brother, who's still in the hospital, thanking Lieutenant Menard. We we'll always hold a special place in the heart of my brother and all of us. May your heroic legacy continue to shine down on us. Lieutenant Menard leaves his wife Tina and three children. The family received the Martin E. Pierce Commemorative Line of Duty Death Medal. Members of the fire department have heavy hearts and are doing what they can to move forward. Any firefighter fatality, it changes you, it changes your life no matter who you are. A sea of thousands in uniform paid tribute to Menard. The fire community and city of Worcester all coming together. We mourn with them, our heart bleeds with them, and how we'll be with them uh, and the Menard family. The department says they're continuing to deal with the emotional scars from Lieutenant Menard's line of duty death. Lieutenant Dwyer echoes other members of the department, saying Lieutenant Menard was more than a coworker, more than a friend, truly a brother. In Worcester, Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. The Worcester Fire Department is also giving an update on the condition of firefighter Christopher Pace. He was injured while working at the four alarm fire with Lieutenant Menard. Worcester Fire says Pace is still in the hospital but is in stable condition. They say he will have a lengthy recovery, but he has the support of his family and all members of the fire department behind him. I'd also like to thank uh, UMass uh, Medical Center for the incredible care that um, they provided our firefighters uh, to the staff of the fire, but also uh, to Chris Pace. He is receiving the best medical care possible. 
Lieutenant Menard is credited with saving Pace's life by pushing him out of a third floor window while battling the Stockholm Street fire. The City of Worcester and the professional firefighters of Massachusetts have started a fund to help the family of Lieutenant Menard. If you would like to donate to the Menard Children's Fund, you can visit the website at pffmfoundation.org. 100% of the fund will go to the future needs of Menard's children. Firefighters from the area and across the country line the streets of Worcester today. For some, it's something they say they've seen too often. Thousands were here to pay their respects. Our Valerie Bell is at Union Station with more. Valerie. Yeah, Olivia, thousands of firefighters lined up right here at Union Station this morning. Now, it was a very hard day for them, but they all came together to show their respects for someone who they say is a brother. People don't realize how dangerous a job is until something like this happens. Hundreds of firefighters from all over line Worcester streets to show their respect for fallen firefighter Lieutenant Jason Menard. It's one big community. It doesn't matter which state, which city you're in, it's one big community, you know. We're all brothers and sisters doing the same job. Lieutenant Menard gave his life to save the lives of others, an act of selfless bravery. Men and women from different fire departments say shows the character of first responders. It's comforting for us to know that everybody we're working the scene with has our back. And unfortunately, at any cost. Firefighter Mark Epstein says this is his first time attending a firefighter's funeral. He says after hearing about the tragic loss of Lieutenant Menard, he felt compelled to be here. Just like Lieutenant Menard, he is also the father of a child who has Down syndrome. I feel an additional loss because I know how much more attention that child needs to thrive. And it just really hit home and I felt like I really had to come. But for some others, they say sadly they've attended many funerals. Some of first responders they know and others they have never met. As many funerals as, as I've been to, you always see people out of state coming to New York. so. It's my honor to be here. The funeral procession passed by Union Station as firefighters said their final goodbye. Well, the man uh, is a hero. He put his life in uh, jeopardy for this many work for, and uh, he saved their lives. Whether they knew Lieutenant Menard or not, they all know this firefighter to be the true definition of a hero. And it was uh, something we were brought up uh, growing up. That's what you thought the firemen were and are. And uh, he's the uh, epitome of it all. All of the firefighters I spoke to today said that they admire Lieutenant Menard's heroic actions. They said that they know it's especially hard to have this happen right near the holidays, but send all their condolences to the family. Reporting in Worcester, Valerie Bell, Worcester News Tonight. A moving sight at Worcester Airport over the weekend, JetBlue flew their Blue Bravest aircraft to Worcester Airport on Saturday. It was created as a tribute to the New York Fire Department after 9-11. JetBlue sent Blue Bravest after receiving a request from an employee of the Webster Fire Department. Switching gears now, the Worcester County District Attorney's Office releases new information on a police-involved shooting in Westboro last week. The DA's office says an officer shot and killed a man on Friday after the man stabbed his wife multiple times. The incident happened at the Windsor Ridge Apartments. Officers told the man to drop his knife. The woman survived and is listed in stable condition. The sergeant who shot the suspect is on administrative leave per department policy. The incident is under investigation. State lawmakers filing a distracted driving bill Monday. It bans mobile devices while driving unless the devices are used in hands-free mode. Right now, Massachusetts is the only New England state without a distracted driving bill in place. Our Matt Restino has more. Massachusetts lawmakers appear closer than ever to banning drivers from using handheld cell phones. A conference committee reached a compromise after the House and Senate passed different versions of the bill earlier this year. The committee reportedly had been hung up on the way to ensure the new law would not increase racial profiling. We wanted everybody involved from law enforcement to lawmakers and the motoring public to feel comfortable with the language of the bill. So it seems that you know the impasse has been resolved and we find that very encouraging. 
Central Massachusetts Safety Auto School General Manager Jake Cooney says the bill is crucial to stopping distracted driving. The next best thing besides the threat of tragedy is the pocketbook or getting in trouble with their parents or having their license revoked. Um, and um, so having this law on the books will save lives. A 2018 study by AAA found more than half of drivers use a handheld device while behind the wheel. Cooney says it takes drivers' attention away from the road. It's a thinking skill more than a physical skill, so you can't be distracted because you have to concentrate on your situational awareness. Massachusetts is the only state in New England without a law banning the use of handheld devices. Many say it's long overdue. All eyes should be on the road. We shouldn't be distracted by our phones for messages or music or, or whatever. I'm surprised they haven't passed it yet. There's a lot of uh, car accidents, mainly like teenagers and stuff. It's just not a good thing to do. Although he wishes a distracted driving law was already on the books, Cooney says it's better late than never. There's two times to plant a tree. One is 20 years ago and then the second best time is today. So let's plant this tree and, and bring some safety, more safety into our streets and highways. The bill is being released from committee, which means that it can't be amended. A vote in both the House and the Senate is expected within the next couple of days, and the goal is to get the bill on Governor Baker's desk by the end of the week. In Worcester, Matt Restaino, Worcester News Tonight. District 1 City Councilor Sean Rose is requesting the city take a look at reopening the south end of Brook Street. Councilor Rose is asking City Manager Ed Augustus for a report on the feasibility and impact of opening up the Brook Street dead end. Right now, the road meets at a dead end in the parking lot of the Showcase Cinema's North Movie Theater Complex. The dead end was created in 1996 when the cinema was built. Rose will submit his request at Tuesday night's City Council meeting.